Hello again, and welcome to the 20 November 2015 edition of Portsmouth This Week, the voice of Portsmouth Town Hall. Our special guest today is uh, Portsmouth Police Officer Scott Sullivan, who is also a longtime friend. I knew him when he was going to high school. Uh, and before we get started, though, I want to mention to our audience that Scott's been recognized on both the state and local level for outstanding police work. Uh, last year, you received the 2014 Justice Award in Community Policing from Attorney General uh, Peter Kilmartin. And this past May, you received Portsmouth Community Service Award for your work running the Portsmouth Police Christmas Gift Drive, which continues, and we'll talk about that. Well done, Scott. Thank you. Uh, as I say, we'll talk about the Christmas Drive in a few minutes, but our main topic of discussion today is your current position as Portsmouth sole, meaning only, uh, school resource officer. And I wonder if you could explain how this position came about and why people felt it might be needed. Generally, the position is in most school districts. Um, we wanted it for about five years, and just from lack of funding, it was a, a difficult position to get. It's really important to, to build relationships with the kids. Yeah, this is, uh, when I try to do a little bit of online research about it, a lot of people have these, like I think in Middletown there are several, one at each school or something. Uh, and as, as I understand it, the, the town council kicked in half and the school committee or the school district kicked in half of, to pay your salary and get this position filled. There was a, there was a lot of help. I know the Portsmouth Business Association, the Prevention Coalition, I believe uh, the police union, the fire department all kicked in money towards it. Okay. Now, there, w was there any one thing that, that triggered this or was it just something we felt like we needed because of all the things that is happening in other schools around the country. I mean, I don't believe there's one specific incident. I mean, uh, some of the kids thought maybe because of bad things that have happened countrywide, yeah. but it's certainly just been a, a needed position. Can you uh, talk a little bit about what your responsibilities are as a school resource officer? The number one thing is to keep the kids safe, as well as the staff, faculty, and then we get into relationship building. But safety is paramount. Yeah. Now you have an office in the school. Right. I have one office in the high school. And can kids come in and knock on your door? And My door is open the whole time for them. Okay, great. Uh, I, I guess that, that position s seems to have several aspects to it. You know, one is you're there as a police officer. So Correct. if something happens, you're on the scene, you can react to it and, and bring in the rest of law enforcement if needed. Uh, the other thing, though, you're a resource for both the students if they have questions about things with the law, I assume. And, the, and the, the faculty as well, if they want to, if they say, could you beef this up or something, uh, I, I assume you're doing that as they well. They are my absolute uh, best resource, are the students and the staff. They come to me for anything, and that's where you take the term school resource officer. I tell people I'm not able to solve a ton of problems, but I have such a network of people in the school, outside of the school, I can usually point them in the right direction. Now, do you also do counseling of any kind? Where you I would co we could consider an informal counselor. My training isn't in counseling, but through life experience and, and things uh, that a normal teenager might go through, we can try to get them in the right I place. I used to counsel you a lot back in this the This is true. <laughs> uh, what schools do you uh, provide this kind of support to? Are they all schools in Portsmouth or just the high school? All the Portsmouth Public Schools, so Portsmouth High, Portsmouth Middle School, Melville, and Hathaway. Okay, and uh, what do you do? Do you go over to those schools uh, once a week or something, or how do you uh, check it, in it, with them? It generally, I spend most of my time at the high school. Then it's middle school would be secondary, and the elementary schools. I'm at every school yeah. multiple times per week. It may only be for 10 or 20 minutes at the elementary school, but generally I'm at the high school and middle school. Now, I, I understand that the other schools have either counselors or somebody that kind of can keep track of the daily things. And do you work with them as well? I, I do. I get calls. I have meetings with all the principals, the assistant principals, all the house leaders in the middle school, uh, counselors in all the schools will contact me uh, regarding various issues that may be going on at home, just just investigative things. Yeah. Uh, you know, how, how, speaking of your own background, I mean, g give us a little bit about your own background. It, as a, as a student, as a, as a resident of Portsmouth, but also in the police department. And how do you think that helped prepare you for this job? Well, growing up in Portsmouth, having a daughter in the school system, 
Uh, going through the school system myself, I think a big one is that I've been the assistant boys varsity soccer coach for 18 years. I've uh, always had a heart for the town, being a, like you said, a citizen and a taxpayer. It's, it's personal to me to make sure these kids have yeah. every opportunity they can. So your daughter's in middle school? She is. So she, she doesn't have to walk by your office? Not yet, day, but she school. does see me. Right now she still likes that I'm the school resource officer. We'll see how that goes. Yeah, right, exactly. Um, so you've been on the job for about, what, three months or so since the start of the school year? Three months today. Okay, how do you think it's going? What's, give us a three-month uh, sit rep. I said the job is everything that I thought it would be and more, and it's nothing that I thought it would be. It's, <laughs> it's been amazing. I think the first week or two, it's definitely a big learning curve, especially for the students, because they weren't sure that I was coming. So when they saw a police officer, I think the natural thing was, oh, wow, there must be a, a problem or something bad's going on. And then I got to meet with every grade level in assemblies and kind of tell them what my role was. And some kids want to push the envelope to see sure how it is. Was. But they're all kids. They're all fantastic. And the teachers, administration, police department, they're wonderful. So, it's, so they really welcome you to... To the schools, then I guess. Oh, they, they've been they've been fantastic because, and we're still feeling out each other's roles. In three months, yeah, we're still on that short-term goal plan. Now, what did you do as a police officer? How how long have you been doing that? And uh, what kind of what, what kind of work did you do? Patrols, normal patrols? Or? I've been a midnight patrol officer in Portsmouth for four four and a half years before I started this, and I was all the shifts in Jamestown for about three and a half years prior. Yeah, your brother was a Portsmouth police officer too. Was My brother it? is a police chief in New Hampshire now. Okay, great. Tell him I said hello. I will. Uh, I, I can't imagine, honestly, just, just watching television and seeing what it's, what it's like in some schools or some areas. Again, Portsmouth doesn't necessarily replicate everything, but we have similar problems to everybody else. Uh, what are some of the typical problems that you have to deal with, the issues? Uh, you're still always concerned about drugs, alcohol, whether it be in school or out of school. You're worried about the bullying aspect, whether it's online with, I mean, technology from when we were younger. Yeah. It's, it's changed so yeah. much. Um, those are the major, major concerns, but every day it's something different. When you have almost 3,000 students and staff, someone's having some sort of an issue every day, and it might be very, very minor. It could be something that's uh, really up there on the scale. Yeah. And the thing is, how do you deal with with the bullying and the cyber-stalking kind of stuff? I mean, how do you even find out about that? Does somebody come in and say, hey, I'm being picked on? That's that's generally, believe it, that's, and that's how it's worked in the beginning. Kids didn't know. I generally have someone, I probably have about 100 to 150 kids a day come through my office, and I'm not in my office a ton. Wow. Um, some to say hello. Some you can see that they'll say hello and build a relationship that might tell me something. Some have just come in and said, I'm worried about this kid. Um, this kid's being picked on. This is my friend. Um, yeah. Or they may have seen something online written about them. And then we, we, we do our due diligence. Uh, we determine whether it's a school issue or whether it's a criminal issue. And then we go from there. Okay, so I think that's a good thing for kids to do is if they have a friend that's being bullied. Because a lot of times the people being bullied don't want to go to authorities, you know. Uh, and then uh, I think also kids should realize that the people who are bullying them are the ones that have the problems. You know, they they do this for a reason, I guess. Uh, is there any kind of a a, a positive like anti-bullying program or something at the schools? I mean, generally they they all have the the traditional things you'd see the signs and and the meetings and things like that. That's that is in my medium to long-term goals to set something up. I mean, you always want to be creative and find a new way. Yeah. Uh, what we worked on this year, we call it Everybody Has a Story. And I challenged all kids in all grades to learn something about one of your classmates that you normally wouldn't talk to. I said it's very difficult to not like someone if you know something you know, about them. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and I think that we're going to be talking in the next couple of weeks, too, about uh, the issue of maintaining a, a, you know, a, a nice uh, sort of atmosphere in the schools for learning and obviously bullying and all these other cyber things that you see sexting etc i'm sure portsmouth is not immune to any of these portsmouth kind of is not immune to anything <laughs> anything yeah and our that's not a bad are, thing our kids are our kids are kids our Just, kids are they're also way too smart i think and they, they have they, like they, they, they have out. the same problems that they have in new york city that they have in 
the Midwest. Yeah. They have the same fears, hopes, dreams, and things that bother them that you and I wouldn't think would be a huge deal, but as a teenager there, yeah. it can be massive. Now, drugs and alcohol use has got to be a major concern. It's a concern, but it, it's, it's probably the most difficult thing to break into. It's not like a student is going to sell drugs in front of me. You get rumors, you get kids who talk to you, you do your best. And I, again, I, I don't, I'm never of the just say no persuasion, I'm just say no K-N-O-W. I like to educate the kids, even the kids who will tell me that they may yeah. smoke marijuana. I yeah. said, let's sit down and have a discussion and, and why it's good or bad. And it's, it's open and frank. I, I won't lecture them. We just talk about it. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a key thing. And, and, you know, not just say, don't do this. Say, be educated. Le you know, learn about this stuff. And I think that'll, that'll go a long way. Now, I, I, as I recall, you're qualified. You went to a course in, in drug recognition kind of stuff. I am a certified drug recognition expert. That uh, generally has to do with uh, driving under the influence, say, of, instead of alcohol, it would be drugs. But it's an intensive course, and we ended up, the last part of it's out in Maricopa County Prison in Arizona. Wow. So you see the really You really see stuff. them. You sure do. Yeah. It's too bad you can't show these kids, uh, some of the kids that. I actually have. Oh, you have? <laughs> well, yeah. I have pictures and videos from when yeah. I was out there, and I've shared that with many of them. Um, so uh, the other thing is that you don't really get involved in general school discipline problems. You're, you're talking more about law and, and infractions like that and drug use, obviously, and uh, does, I, I assume the school and the faculty have their own system for disciplining kids for Correct. education? It's, it, that's where the fine line, and, and sometimes we cross paths. Uh, sometimes they may want a student removed from a class who's just being a pain in the neck. He's not really being disorderly. He's not doing any crime, and I really have to stay away from things like that. I will assist a teacher administration with anything up until a point. When we get into that gray area, I usually either check with a supervisor or we just work it out amongst ourselves and say yeah. that's really not what I'm designed to do here. Yeah. Uh, I, I always wondered too, uh, you know, if you, if you have kids that have problems at home, you know, maybe they're, maybe they're one of their parents is an alcoholic or something, and uh, how do you deal with things like that? Do, do you get involved in things like that as counselor or something? We have fantastic counselors at the schools. Uh, there's counselors, there's social workers, there's a psychologist. Uh, they have guidance counselors. They have teachers that they... So there's a whole staff that... There's a, there's a stack, and this. we we continually work together to find the best outlet. There's certain kids that will are very receptive to me that will not calm down for anybody else, and they'll calm me down. I have no problem going down and talking to a kid, and I may have a prior relationship, or for some reason they like me, and there's some of them who never want to see me. Yeah. Well, that's good. I think it's it's great that we got this backup group of people there that can help out. Um, getting back for a second to the drugs and alcohol use, do you actually see this in the schools when well, schools going on, or is it all like after school? I th I do I believe it happens in the school. Yes. Do I have hard evidence of that at this point? No. I mean, there's telltale signs of things that we do find. Uh, you may or may not have seen a child who may have been using. And sometimes, again, that gets into the, if someone's under the influence of something, that's not in and of itself a crime. That becomes a school issue. Yeah. So we, we balance those scales, and sometimes we, uh, I might jump in as a drug recognition expert to see, hey, let's see what, how this person is doing if they need medical attention. Or, and that, doesn't, that does not happen very much. Yeah. Now, how readily available are drugs here, do you think, in Portsmouth? I think they're extremely easy to obtain. It's kind of depressing, isn't it, for being uh, it, it's, a long time it's, that's, a, that's a societal problem, not a Portsmouth problem. <clears throat> no, understood. It's not just us. Uh, well, how about walking us through your daily schedule? So you get in at what time? I am in the schools at 6.30 in the morning. Okay. Um, always at the high school to begin the day. Uh, the buses come. I'll either greet the kids coming off into the cafeteria or I do a little traffic to make sure people aren't driving by the buses. I have my office door open. Um, it's Again, it's just that relationship, walking through. I may have gone in the station and found out there was an incident that happened the night before, the weekend before. Maybe it doesn't have to be a kid that was in trouble. Maybe a kid was in a car accident or their mom was in an accident or sick or maybe there was a death in the family. <clears throat> there may have been an arrest. 
One of them may have got a traffic ticket. So you might seek those kids out and say, hey, how, how are you doing? Is everything all right? And, yeah. Uh, I, and most kids come in because I keep all sorts of treats in my office. <laughs> I have bottles of water, Gatorade. There's yeah. always a snack. There's mints. And that's probably been the best thing to really? get kids in because they'll come in, hey, do you mind if I have a piece of candy? And okay. Just a little one, I promise. I'm that's, not that's why on your Facebook page, you're look, always looking for... For oh, I'm going. Like I'm to, to Doug. I'm going stuff. poor. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet. Well, that's certainly a worthwhile <laughs> thing to support. Um, then I assume you you have periodic meetings with the faculty and the administration of of the schools on a daily basis. Okay, uh, and you've got a number which I think we're going to show up there at some point where people can always contact you. Now, would that include parents? That's who are absolutely. Concerned about? If you have a concern, you can call me. That is, I we are twenty four seven three sixty five. Can it be frustrating? You might have to wait for me to get back to you, but I will take any call, any concern. Um, again, if it's important to them, it has to be important to us. Okay, and then uh, when does your work day usually end? I end around 2.30 or so. That's when uh, schools uh, let's, When schools, uh, but uh, I generally am later because of, of different dismissal times for the yeah. elementary schools and the, and the middle school. There's so many events that you want to be present at. I mean, I served pasta last night at a Patriots Committed uh, oh, yeah. event. Another good organization. Yeah. We've done sporting events. Uh, I did a robotics club last week. They wanted to talk about drugs. I know that there was a little shocker to me, too, yeah. with robotics and drugs, but the kids are great. I mean, I want to be involved so the kids see that I'm not just here as a law enforcement figure. I'm here to support them. Yeah, and I think it's really useful to have somebody identified as if, if you have a group it might be the cheerleaders at a football team and they want to find out more about this stuff they can call you in and absolutely yeah and it's, it's not I mean, they, they call me officer sully which is fine some yeah. call me mr sullivan some call me officer sullivan i don't even mind sully if, it, if that's if that's what it takes to break down the wall yeah. that they take away the uniform yeah and realize that i'm a person as well then that's that's a great thing yeah i think i think my, my own feeling is the key thing is respect for what you do, and I think that's that's part of the law enforcement aspect. You know, you want to show people that the police are on your side. We're helping you. We're here to help you. You know, it's not just, uh, we're not just the bad guys. Okay. And that's tough anymore because the police all around the country are under a lot of pressure uh, to be politically correct and everything else and what they do, and it's, it's tough, I think, on you guys. I think uh, as a police officer in this date and age but some of it we we created ourselves and some of it is media driven all i know i can do and the men and women i work with is do the best job we can yeah. every day now you ever get kids come up and say hey how do i get into law enforcement absolutely like that's probably very uh, that's a that's a common question yeah that's good i kind of tell them they need to stay out of more trouble but that, that's <laughs> that's one of the, the responses yeah what are your major concerns you like i say you've been here three months but you've seen you've seen the territory here. What are your major concerns? I, uh, obviously, I can get concerned about the bullying, the technology aspect, the alcohol and drugs. General respect. I, I do think that, and that's not saying we have bad kids. Sometimes there's a, a lack of general respect or of others. Uh, yeah. And that I do correct that. Just uh, some of the language that kids may use. I'll say, hey, you may want to choose a different thing. Knocking on a door, greeting people properly. And I think uh, the biggest problem in Portsmouth, I use this word a lot, is apathy. Yeah. Uh, I, they, I saw a cartoon the other day where it said, welcome to It'll Never Happen Here, USA, and it's got police responding it. Do I think we have imminent things ready to happen? No, but we're just as susceptible Absolutely. as anyone else. A friend of mine is the SRO in Newtown, Connecticut, so wow. that'll, yeah. uh, and he was the second man in that day. Yeah. Uh, I think if you if you went to individual parents, they say, "Well, my kid doesn't do that stuff." That is, my that kid's is not generally do that. That, yeah. that is that's parents are great, and it's it's difficult to tell a parent that their child has done something, yeah. and they either don't want to believe it or it's natural to to want to protect your child. But sometimes yeah. you try and do it in the correct way and say, "Let's try and find a solution," and maybe there's a reason why. It's not about arresting kids or getting stats or numbers about that. It's about correcting behavior and teaching them how to be a productive member of society from a law-abiding standpoint and realize that we are here to help them. Yeah, and I think it's important, again, to, just to rehash that parents can call you. Absolutely. And talk to you if they have concerns. Send me an email. We can, 
they can drop me an anonymous note if they're concerned. Yeah. They can drop something in a mailbox at any school. I think that's a great resource, uh, Scotty. Uh, you know, I, I, I can see where I, I would have probably liked something like that back when you were in high school <laughs> and my daughters were in high school. No, they were, they were great. Yeah, right. Um, how would you s assess your general relationship, and you've touched on this already, with students and also with the faculty? I mean, you guys, you feel like you're pretty tight? Students are, are fantastic. I think in the faculty, who I absolutely love and the, the miracles that they do every day, I think they were apprehensive in the first week or two because they weren't sure of my role if, if I was there to be a big brother on them and then they realize that I am here to help them if they have problems outside of school, if it's crime related, they might have something going on in their household and they, they'll, they'll ask me a, a traffic question. It, it, so it's been really good and I've probably taught 40 or 50 different classes and gone in as a guest speaker on various law topics, which has been fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Um, <laughs> how, here's, the, here's another question and this is an important one. How can people help you? How can parents help you? For example, of I guess I do your job. You know, to, you to speak job. to speak positive of the police uh, at home. At, yeah. at home, uh, to generally let them know that they can come to us uh, or find an avenue. Uh, I just think sometimes we're growing up kids way too fast, and it's really easy to put them in front of a TV and put them in front of an iPad. Where correct? I just I just think that again, that's societal. We we grew up in a different time. We did and. I, I, said, I told the kids, I envy their technology, and I pity them so much for the, what they don't get yeah, to see. Yeah, because they're sucked into it, and they're like magnetized to it. So, I mean, in, in general, that's, I like their assistance. And again, most parents are great. Know where your kids are on the weekends. Yeah. Be vigilant. Go through their cars. Go through their, go through their technology. They're yeah. the child still. If they're 15, 16, they're still a child, yeah. and you need to check up on them. We had uh, the, the pol police officer that's in charge of cyber crimes. Detective Morse. Uh, come in a couple weeks ago, and he was great. And he was talking about that, about how parents should keep track of what their kids are doing online and on their devices. I guess the question is, how do you do that? I mean, it's, it's do you just, you know, it seems like uh, kids would probably resist Oh, well, I, I always say you're the parent, they're the child. If, yeah, you're pay, if you're paying for the phone, if you're paying for the computer, you're paying for the internet yeah. access, you yeah. don't have to be mean about it. You can work out, yeah. you work out trust. I need to be very open and as you see, it's easier, you know, to keep it very tight and loosen the reins than it is to try and tighten the reins once you've let a kid do anything they want. Yeah, yeah I've, al I've always thought of essentially your generation and, and going forward as uh, people want to be friends with their kids rather than parents, you know, it seems to me. Uh, I, I think I And yet, I got to tell you, I found myself saying, you know, when my father would say, because I told you so, that's why, I find myself saying, I'll never say that to my kids. And then I find myself saying that because sometimes you just can't, you know, that's the reason right now is I'm telling you not to do that stuff. I mean, we just, I, again, I think it goes back to that apathy that even if my kid is doing this, the bad stuff is never going to happen. My kid's not going to be the one who's in the DUI accident. Yeah, my yeah. kid isn't going to be the one who's going to do something bad in school. My kid could never have stolen something. My kid won't use drugs. It's, yeah. it's, it's not that there's a ton of bad ones, but just be aware and help them early. And probably a key thing here is, like you say, TV is just, uh, you're watching TV, but that's, you can also have conversations at home, and that's the key thing for parents to do, I would think. Oh, communicate. Have, have conversations with kids about anything, as long as they're still talking. Uh, I know you use social media, particularly Facebook. You have a Facebook page, uh, and uh, I think that's very useful for getting the word out to everybody and also for allowing people to come back in and make comments, kind of talking to you. Yeah, we don't delete comments. Some people have some <laughs> some things they like to tell me, and that's okay. That's, that's yeah. what it's about. Just don't post it on Facebook. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, what resources do you have now, and what do you think el else you need? What else would you like to see? I say? literally have a budget of zero. Yeah. So you like a budget or something? Uh, I would like to have that going forward, to be able to do some things for the kids. Uh, obviously, the complaint is always, there's nothing to do. I always say, you tell me what you want to do, whether it's set up movies or yeah. I think we could do bonfires on Sandy Point Beach that were chaperoned loosely so the kids can still gather. I, whatever the kids want to do from K through 12, I think we need to find ways to support them and not just the athletes, not just the band kids. There's yeah. some people who like 
all sorts of different things, and it's it's really cool. You, by the way, you do have a great band at Portsmouth High They're School. They're amazing. They are amazing. Uh, let's let's talk about your Christmas gift program with the police. We got a couple minutes here, and uh, what is it, and how did you get involved in it? Uh, about four years ago, Deputy Peters asked if I would work with Nicole Pasco at the school. So we kind of passed the hat. They gave us a few gifts they needed. And we, I think we had about $500. It's so the second year. We pushed it to about 3000 And then last year, it kind of exploded. We did almost $10,000 in aid. Wow. And, then on the, and then on top of that, probably over 1,000 gifts on top of that money. It's... It's generally for Portsmouth and Aquinnick Island, yeah. but we did help people in three states and 18 communities last year. It might be someone who comes from a traffic stop. We've had people that we learn about their hard luck stories, and we try and help them do it anonymously. Yeah. See, I think th there is apathy out there, but if you ask people about things like this, I think most people are more than willing to give. You know, well, people this. have been great, but they don't realize that there are homeless people. There are kids who go hungry in our schools. Yeah, it's in hard Portsmouth. for us to believe, isn't it? Uh, and I thought there was a great article in Newport Daily News about you and, and your Thanksgiving 24-hour walk. Uh, that'll be interesting. You want to tell us how you came upon that as a... Uh, like I said, I was waking up at 3 in the morning <laughs> saying, how am I going to raise my $15,000 this year? Yeah. And uh, somehow a 24-hour walk came out of my mouth, and my wife said, no, yeah. you've done crazier things, so... We just, it just kind of went from there. It's back at Portsmouth High School on Thanksgiving Day for 24 hours. Correct. And you want people to come down and say hello at least, right? You can right? say hello, drop off a gift, or just, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. I say people don't have to support with money or gift, just sometimes doing something nice for your neighbor. It doesn't Absolutely. have to be to us. Uh, how can people support it? I think we did have the website up there. They, can they also drop off gifts? And they can drop it off at the station, any school. They can, yeah. there's websites available. Uh, speaking, on the Facebook. speaking of which, <laughs> let me give you a small donation from my family. Well, I appreciate that no, very much. No, that's quite right. I, I really applaud you, Scott, for what you're doing. And I really want to thank you for joining us today and coming in and sharing your story. And I'd like to keep you on. The, I'd like you to come back sometime. I would in be fact, honored. In fact, if you want to, you can bring somebody with you, maybe a student or something. And we'd love to keep wired in with what you're doing there. That would be amazing. You're doing great work, buddy. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, and just, just a reminder to our, our uh, viewing audience, uh, we have the Portsmouth Historical Society has calendars, if you can get a shot of that, Dave. Uh, and uh, they're the 2016 calendars. They're available now at Clements and other local retailers. They make great Christmas, Christmas gifts to relatives and family, and you're supporting the Portsmouth Historical Society as well. Uh, so that's one thing. The other thing is just a reminder that on the 2nd of December, uh, Our Town Portsmouth is going to air for the first time on uh, Rhode Island uh, PBS. Uh, and uh, it's, it's going to be a, essentially a show about us. It's going to be a one-hour show about our town. Uh, all the video and the photographs come from people that are local. It's going to air at 8 o'clock on the 2nd of December on Cox Channel 8. I uh, hope you guys will be out there and, and take a look at it. That's all for me. Thanks very much. We'll see you next time. Administrators from the district and the Chief of Educator Excellence and Instructional Effectiveness at the Rhode Island Department of Education will discuss the latest information about the park assessment in the Portsmouth Public Schools. Join us at the Portsmouth Middle School on December 7th from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. to hear important information and get all your questions answered. For more information, go to www.portsmouthschoolsri.net.